because uh, military has always, uh, uh, always means really always from the Stone Age, uh, is using the tool of co communication and it is to, uh, first of all, to uh, display your strength, you show everybody what you can do and hide your weaknesses. Uh, and uh, this business has not changed today significantly. Uh, it has changed only one certain little portion. The speed and the scale has changed significantly, but it is all about the same thing. How I would uh, make sure that I am stronger than you. Uh, and that is, I think, uh, the question needs to be answered. It's not about uh, whether the military should do something on that. It's about that we should do. Uh, and I, I would uh, divide, uh, as a military, I would divide their operation of strategic communication into, in, in three main lines of op uh, operations. The first one, and I think the most important one, is how we would make sure that we do believe in ourselves. As a nation, from the, coming from the small nation, it is not always easy. So you, you have to make all, uh, all possible to make sure that your, yourself uh, believe in yourself. Uh, that means that uh, you know that you are strong, you know, uh, you know that you will be able to uh, fight any adversaries if needed, uh, and you need to believe in your government, uh, in your system, only then it is possible to win, uh, militarily or other, other, otherwise. I think that was something which, which uh, in Ukraine was a challenge, because the Ukrainian people, especially on Crimea, they did not believe in their government. They didn't believe in the course. They didn't know actually what the Ukraine is. But after the conflict today, they are stronger than they have ever been as a state, uh, because now they understand the benefits of, of, uh, of an independent government and uh, democratically elected system. Uh, and for that, what we in Estonia do, we do big exercises. We are, uh, and we are very proud about that. We are nation in arms, if you want. We have a conscript system, every male, uh, and all the volunteer females can go through the uh, uh, conscript system. Everybody has something uh, to do with it. Everybody has a direct contact to the military, uh, through their families, uh, through to somebody who is either in volunteer, defense league, national guard type, or has been a reservist or is a reservist of the, of the unity. And then through this, we, we educate the whole society. And we tell them, during the conscription and the years in the reserve that we are going to fight and we are going to fight for the independence whatever happens. Uh, and uh, I think that is the first mean of communication. And then, of course, these people are our communicators who make sure that our narrative is uh, all over uh, Estonia understood the same way. Uh, the second uh, line of operation on my opinion, is how we make sure that uh, not only ourselves, we believe in us, ourselves, but that our friends and allies understand the things the same way as we do and believe in us as well. And that is where uh, the soldier comes in, who goes to, uh, together with, uh, with the Germans to Djibouti, with the French to uh, Central African Republic, not exactly the place where Estonians like to be, uh, or with, with, the, with the Brits and the Americans to Iraq and Afghanistan. They are the communicators, making sure that our friends and allies believe that we share the values and want to be part of the solution. And it is not always easy to make sure that everybody understands the reserve-based system. So the exercises like we had last May, or this May, uh, with 18,000 people uh, that we can show our, our friends and allies, that is what we can do. We, we can fight for ourselves, and more importantly, and I don't think that is believed really in, in NATO, in all the countries of, of NATO today, that we will shoot back. That we will be fighting whatever decisions NAC will take in Brussels, so better take the decisions quicker because there will be fight. In Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia, there will be soldiers, 60,000 roughly, who will be fight for the independence for sure, uh, and then uh, alliances, uh, possibilities to make it not happen, by uh, deterring uh, everything. But if something happens, we need to have a pl plan in place. And that is not easy to convince, okay, it's easy to convince the soldiers of the respective countries, but to convince the, the, the people and compete on, the, on this uh, 
mark it with the Russian narrative, uh, say in, in uh, Bavarian villages or uh, in some uh, East German uh, cities where uh, people have lost uh, kind of, uh, their faith in the government, uh, to make them believe that it is worth die for little Estonia. It is not easy. And that narrative is important, uh, that everybody understands Estonia is, a not, is not a little Nazi country on the edge of Europe, but a modern democratic e-government-led uh, forward-looking country which is worth, worth of fighting for. Uh, and, then, and then the third line of operation, which is the most difficult one for a small nation, and it is even difficult for alliance, is to fight with Russian propaganda, with Russian fake uh, uh, news, with uh, governmentally orchestrated criminal behavior on the, uh, on the public domain, where they can tell every lie they want, uh, and there's always somebody who would believe that lie. Uh, we have an example of that uh, just recently. Uh, one of our conscripts, and if you have three, three and a half thousand conscripts a year, there's always somebody who is a bit strange. So one of our conscripts uh, did, did shoot himself uh, to get a cool scar, to come back from the service with a, with a nice uh, bullet wound. Uh, as, as don't do it, please. Uh, so that is one part of the stupid thing. But what, what it caused is how to handle it. Uh, and we've got, and I, I wrote down the questions and translated them. We uh, the, uh, as you know, Minister Shoigu has launched, uh, no, Minister, Defense Ministry and Russia has launched a, a channel called Sputnik, which only purposes uh, to deliver propaganda to Europe uh, and, and to the respective countries in the Baltic states here as well. And we, the, the, the day it happened, and don't, don't believe it is possible to hide. The second thing is if you do the scar, don't put it in the Facebook. Uh, again, not a very sinful thing. But anyway, uh, we got uh, questions uh, almost next day. Do you confirm it was an ethnic Russian who was shot by the other conscript? That was the first question. So the question is already posed the way that Whatever you answer, the answer will be wrong for you. And do you confirm he was uh, mistreated in his unit to, to his nationality? These two questions. So it wasn't the Russian, first. It had nothing to do with others. He went alone to a separate place just to get the wound properly. The, he didn't get the medical, uh, medical uh, advice before that, so he hit the wrong place, so almost died because of that. Uh, but but what, what can you do with it? So it is very perfectly aimed time, so it is all the screen, always the public space is screened by, by Sputnik, so everything will be used against you, as everything I say here can be used against me. Um, and uh, so what we did, uh, we didn't dance anything, we took the so-called um, classic normal media, uh, informed them about this kind of attack, uh, planned attack, and uh, denied uh, answering the questions of Sputnik and uh, broadcasting, uh, national broadcasting, uh, did the news about this fake news, how it will be, how, how they handled it. So, and we managed to avoid this particular thing. But that was uh, absolutely sure you will not be able to uh, do it always. So, in order to get all these three lines of operation proper, uh, first thing you need to know what is happening in the world, and it is much more difficult today at the, as it is, was only uh, newspapers, and that's not too long ago. I'm still reading uh, paper newspapers, uh, but not everybody does. Uh, so it is not difficult, it's very difficult to uh, be aware of things, and then, based on the information, analyze it and get it then uh, uh, that the conclusions are right, and then act based on it, and that all in the cycle, in the loop, which is much, much quicker than even people like me uh, you were, were used to or are used to. So we need to learn how to handle, how to handle uh, this load of information, which means we need to have much more people on dealing with media and strategic communication than we ever had before. And the people is the problem because everybody pays better than the government today. 
and, and all the modern development and all the technological advance is done not anymore by the military. 20 years ago. Even internet is an invention of military. We were not able to use it properly, but, but it was there. But today, Google and Microsoft are doing the things and paying the salaries. And how we get the professional people who know how to handle it to the governmental side, to the dark side, so to say, and work with us, it is very difficult. And I think the struggle in the future will be that. And the second thing, which I think will be my last point, if we work in alliance, and we are, uh, we are uh, hampered by, uh, by the need to say only truth. We are not allowed to lie. So are, this is a concern for... We are not able to get the messages over from the alliance, because every nation tries to do its own messaging. But in certain things, we, I, I think Afghanistan campaign is one of the best uh, examples. You need to get your messages. Uh, right there, uh, together as alliance. So that would be from my side what I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you, General.